Welcome back, everybody. This is the Hot Political Hot Seat Thursday night live call-in show at 727-8750. Once again, 727-8750. We are here with the uh, sheriff candidate, Mr. Tom O'Donnell, uh, but I'd like to say something to everybody out there. I've already voted, and the thing is, uh, that was an early vote, but I want to push the idea, everybody, it's your right to go vote. And that's one of your most important rights. And if you don't do it, you don't have a reason to complain. If the new sheriff gets in and you don't like him, but you didn't vote, don't complain. Or a county commissioner or a congressman or something. So everybody, please, go do what's right and vote. That's one thing great about our country, along with many other things. But that's one of the reasons our veterans fight and die for is for us to go be able to go vote and to speak. Even tonight's show, it's not being edited by anybody. So anyway, Mr. O'Donnell is here live, and it's 727-8750. Mr. O'Donnell, uh, I know... I could, if I could, just on that one, it's not only a right guaranteed you by the Constitution, it's also your responsibility as a citizen. Vote. It doesn't matter who you vote for. I'd love it if you voted for me. But it doesn't matter who you vote for, just as long as you get out and you vote. Exercise your right. If you don't exercise it, it atrophies, and soon you'll lose it. Well, you know, uh, I'm not sure. I'm probably going to be wrong on these statistics, and somebody will inform me on it, but what I understand is about 40% of the people register to vote, and about only 40% of that actually goes to vote. So what you're doing is letting somebody else it, Basically, do it for if you. you figure how many people actually registered to vote in the Nye County... Right. And the fact that the last sheriff's election was basically made by 13,000 people. Right. That's sad. We've got, yeah. what, at least 40,000 people down here? Yeah. Now, not all more voters, but I bet it's more than 13,000. A lot more. Probably yeah. out of 13, probably. And then you I include Beatty, Tonopah, Round Mountain. Yeah. Out towards Lund, there, those people are out there, too, and their votes count. And, you know, and the thing is, people, I go vote for who I think. I don't tell everybody who I vote for, a few friends I might. But the thing is, no matter who you feel is the best, and try to think of who's the best, and vote for that person. If they're going to be uh, a person that's going to represent you the way you want to be represented, or you know they're not going to be, when you go in there and you put in your vote, that's between you and that machine. That's not between you and everybody else. So you got to do what's right and what's right for everyone. And it's just like Mr. O'Donnell here being a, a sheriff deputy. Um, he needs to enforce the law that's right for the public in general. Not his own personal views, but what the law is. Isn't that right? Right. I mean, you know. That's exactly right. We do have people in power all the way up to the president who feels that if he doesn't like the law, he don't need to enforce it. But that's not the way our country has ever been founded. You don't like a law, you do something to get it changed. There is but, a process to change yeah. laws. You don't expect us to do it. Yeah, so, but anyway, we're going on with this, and uh, June 10th is coming up, and that's going to be the main day of the primary. Then we go on to the general uh, election, and I think probably the month of June is when everybody kind of takes a a break and takes a deep breath and say... So right up to the first part of August, I think, yes. Yeah. You you're know, like, oh, my God, that part's over. Yeah, you know, because uh, once you get through it, and a lot of people out there don't realize what a person goes through as a candidate because you basically can't even really go enjoy lunch, can you, without somebody or thinking about somebody comes up and asks you about this, that. Even, as, even as just a regular officer, you get asked questions while you're at lunch. And we answer, at least I do, for uh, the fact that one, we're out in public at that point, that's when you see us, that's when your question comes up. It's uh, like a lot of things there's, um, I've missed a lot of the meet and greets because I've been working on the nights that they've had them. Right. I missed going up to Tonopah for the Rotary. I've missed the uh, one in Artesia, which I heard was a real, uh, real shinding down there. They, <laughs> they got a little, it would have been nice to go to and watch and at least meet some of the people down there. but. I'm not doing this for self, my self worth or self benefit. I'm doing this for the, I believe I could put a better product out on the street, as far as uh, the Nye County Sheriff's Department is concerned. 
if you see me and I'm working, I will answer any question that I can with the time that it's allotted. Usually I'm running the call to call, but if I get a couple spare minutes, you people that know me know that. I will talk to you. I will talk to anybody out there. Well, don't, just don't be afraid to come up and ask your question. Well, the thing is, is uh, officers uh, getting along with general public, just John Doe public, has to help the officers a lot because a lot of information you probably receive, knowing that somebody's there that actually supports you. If you can of, foster an atmosphere of trust right. and people actually believe in what you're doing, yeah, they will come up and they'll tell you, you know, this is happening over here and it's these, these times, these specific times. That helps us in our capacity. We pass it on to the guys that can actually work the case. Street deputies are usually going call to call. They're your first responder, initial reporters. But we have street crimes, we have narcotics that we can handle stuff to, and detectives that we can hand stuff over to when um, we get the information that's more germane to what they do. Oh, okay, great question. I know the person that's a young lady that I know. That <laughs> And I'm not going to mention the organization that taught her her safety on guns. And I told her, absolutely not. You know, I carry a CCW. You pull me over. When I pull my license out, the CCW is right there so you can see it. Right. And most times the officer will say, uh, do you got a weapon on you or in the vehicle? And I'll tell them it's in the vehicle or it's on me. Or if I don't have one that night, I just say I don't have one. But this young lady, and I know you're out there watching, you pull up, and that person's carrying a weapon in their car, which is legal in the state of Nevada. Right. She was told you take the weapon and set it on the dash, and I said you should never pull that weapon out when an officer's no, walking no, up no, behind. No. Leave <laughs> I said, where, That's a good way you're going to get is. shot. It just, you know, the but, best thing is when we come up, you can say I have it, and I've had <coughs> this happen to me usually with people that go out the front sight. Yeah. Right, so I have a weapon in the car, and my response was, as long as you come up with the things I'm asking you for and not the weapon, we have yeah. no problems. Yeah, she was instructed, and we shouldn't mention front sight because that happens to be where the person worked at that told her this, is if you got the weapon in the car and they pull you over, first thing to do is either reach in the glove box or under your seat or next to your seat and pull the weapon out and set it on the dash. I said, oh, hell no. no. <laughs> you know, that might be a good way to get a shot. They see your hand coming up from the side of a seat or under a seat with a gun in it. I mean, it's, you know. it's better to keep your hands on the wheel. Yeah, put your yeah. hands up where they can That's see your hands. That's one of the few times 10 and 2 works out 100%. Yeah, well, you know, I, so I told her, I said, uh, well, you had the wrong person teach you. You're going to need me to teach you because that ain't the way you do it, you know? But I just thought, since she, I know she's watching tonight, so. Okay. I just thought to bring it out, you being all, I could just imagine walking up behind a car with your floodlight shining through the car and that, and the person's hand comes up, up above the seat with a gun in it. I mean, I, I don't know who, would it, why the person told her that. I mean. No, that changes I, the stop dramatically. Yeah, you know, and uh, also people out there, things you can do to help. Uh, when I drive down the street and I see late at night, I'm normally up late at night and that, but if I see a car pulled over with one or two people in it and the officers there getting ready to write a citation. That When I go by, I always look at, see what the car looks like or anything to see if it looks like, you know, you don't want to leave the officer out there by himself, you know. I, okay. We get, yeah. uh, it's an unfortunate occurrence, but we get used to that being out here. Yeah. And I like it when somebody like you goes by <laughs> and they're actually seeing the case that goes sideways, at least you can give us some kind of eyewitness account right. of what was going on at that particular point. It's um, it's just part of the job, part and parcel, and we deal with it as we go. Well, I always responded to things, and down in, this was down in San Diego, a car came off onto the highway, off the ramp really fast, hit the side of another car, which was an unmarked police mm -hmm. car, and they hit the center divider, and that's designed to flip the cars over so they don't go across the interstate. Right. And it flipped over on its roof. Well, the car coming out alongside of me, he slowed up to pull over, but the car that hit him kept going, so I went after the car that <laughs> and followed him down to the exit and got their license number. But when I came back, the highway patrolman was going to arrest me for leaving the scene of an accident. And I said, well, there's somebody else to stop, but I got the license number of the car that hit him. You know, now down in San Diego County, LA County, that. Right. You know, but 
I thought, well, then the guy that was uh, the officer that was in the car, the plain clothes officer, he got out, no, no, leave him alone. We need that number. <laughs> <laughs> but so people can help support the, the deputies, I believe. Oh, yes. And uh, you don't have to interfere. Don't get in the way. The don't do nothing is, stupid. But you know, the one thing everybody seems to forget: the public is our eyes and ears out there. Right. We can't be everywhere at once. That's why we depend heavily on the public. And I guess they're, like, not only their eyes and ears, but their goodwill. Well, what's going on right now, and there's so much seems like bickering going on in that, is uh, in the public's eye, a lot of them it turns them off. I mean, it's like. Oh, Jesus, those guys can't even get along with each other. I ain't going to get, yeah, it's, you know. But uh, it's, I appreciate them being there because I always notice whenever I dialed 911, I was looking for an officer to show up, no matter what they were, all the neighbors say and everything. But yeah. I don't think you guys get the credit you deserve. Uh, sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. Sometimes we get too much. It's, uh, you know, it's... You get shot at once. You don't get the credit you deserve. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you know, it's a, it's a, I just uh, hope that way our sheriff's department could remain personal and stay with the people and I get the, the pride and the help of the people who are supporting the, the sheriff's department. That's, well, the biggest thing is um, the pride starts from within the organization. And if, you're, if you know that your administration is backing you and you're not going to catch any flack for actually going out and doing your job, Right. then there's no problems, then your officer feels more comfortable, and we press on down the road. If uh, there seems to be some kind of friction back there, then that's an adverse reaction. And like I told, uh, I think, the seniors when I was over there once, that you have disgruntled people coming out to handle your call, so there's a bad action there, right. there's a bad reception, and it just looks bad all the way across the board. All right, well, we're going to have to sign off tonight. Good luck. Hey, thank you. Thank Appreciate you for it. coming in. and. Uh, uh, we'll see you after the primary. Okay, Bye. hopefully. Good night, everybody, and we'll see you next Thursday.